week eight of the fantasy baseball season, and here's a few hitters I look to drop this week. The first guy, Matt Mervis of the Chicago Cubs. So Matt Mervis, he was tearing it up in the minor leagues last season in the beginning of this year, but right now it hasn't translated to the major leagues, and he really hasn't done nothing so far in the first 48 at-bats of his career. Homer, four RBIs, four runs scored, a 208 average, and a 255 on base. I know they designated Eric Hosmer for assignment, and Mervis is still going to get the playing time at first base at DH pretty much every day for this Cub team. But right now, he's not been producing. It's been about two and a half, three weeks he's been up here in the major leagues. I know it might be a little bit early for fantasy owners to drop him. But right now, it's already week eight. And Matt Mervis, he hasn't been producing. And you can't wait forever for these guys to come around. Because these prospects, they're lottery tickets. Some guys are going to hit. And some are just not going to do anything and they're overhyped. And so far, that's been the case for Mervis, May 14th at Minnesota, 2 for 4. May 16th at Houston, 2 for 4, Homer in that one. May 17th at the Astros, 0 for 5. May 19th at Philly, 0 for 2 with a run. May 20th at Philly, 1 for 3. And May 21st at Philly, 0 for 2. So right now, the strikeout rate is high for Mervis, which it wasn't in the minor leagues with 18 strikeouts and 48 at bats. He's not really getting good contact on the ball. And it's just an early slump for him in the early going. No doubt about it, he could turn things around and get things going. But in basic 10, 12 team leagues, there's no reason to hold on to Matt Mervis right now. And if he gets going, you could go pick him back up. But right now, well, he's pretty much been non-existent for fantasy baseball. He's a hitter I would drop this week. The next hitter is Jose Abreu of the Houston Nationals. So going into the offseason when they signed him, Houston, I thought it was a great signing. And a guy could hit a lot of home runs and drive in a lot of runs, a former MVP in a nice ballpark over there in Houston. But that obviously hasn't been the case on the season. It's been a way down year. No home runs, 17 RBIs. 12 runs scored, a 215 average and a 278 on base. So it's been rock bottom for Jose Abreu. But right now they're throwing him out there every day. But would it be surprising to me if he turns it around? Absolutely not for Jose Abreu. We've seen it a lot in his career. That second half or even in June, he starts to get things going. And June's only a week away, but the last few weeks as well, no homers, four RBIs. Three runs scored, a 184 average and a 295 on base. So right now, the numbers are way below the Mendoza line. And it's very hard to believe a 30 home run potential hitter over the last few seasons like Abreu has no home runs in his first 172 at-bats. So right now, not getting good contact. He's striking out a decent amount as well as Abreu. But they're still putting him out there fourth or fifth in this lineup. And the Astros think he's going to break out of the slump. But right now, a lot of fantasy owners have take action and drop him in 30% of fantasy leagues over the last two, three weeks. The last few games for Abreu, May 16th versus the Cubs 0 for 3. May 17th versus the Cubs 1 for 4 with a rib. May 19th versus Oakland 1 for 2, two runs. May 20th versus Oakland 0 for 4. May 21st versus Oakland 0 for 2. And right now, he's just not producing, not driving in runs, not showing power. But like I said, it wouldn't be surprising to me that Abreu could turn things around. But right now, while he's done nothing the first two months of the season, there's no reason for fantasy owners to hold on to him. But he could turn the corner and it could be a mistake. But right now, I say drop Abreu this week. The next hitter is Taylor Ward of the Los Angeles Angels. So Taylor Ward last season had a monster year for the Angels. 23 homers, 65 RBIs was his breakout year. With a 281 average, but so far this season, he's been non-existent as well. Four home runs, 17 RBIs, 27 runs scored, a stolen base, a 227 average, and a 303 on base. So that's not going to get the job done. And his strikeout rate is way up there as well. We know Ward struck out 120 times last season. And so far this year, 42 strikeouts in the early going. So this Angel team, it's always something. It's either the pitching's not pitching well. Well, some of these hitters aren't getting going out. I know he's batting anywhere from first to fourth in the lineup is Ward, but he's, he's having a great year. Maybe it was a fluke. Who knows what it was, but right now he's not producing at all. May 15th at the O's, 2 for 6 a run. May 16th at the O's, 1 for 4. May 17th at the Orioles, 0 for 3. May 18th at Baltimore, 0 for 2. May 19th versus the Twins, 0 for 3 a run in a ribbon. May 20th versus the Twins, 0 for 4 and sat out. The 21st game. So right now he's been dropped in a decent amount of fantasy leagues as Taylor Ward. He definitely could turn it around with a lot of good hitters in that lineup and protection, obviously, over there in Los Angeles. But right now he's done nothing pretty much this season. To only have 17 RBIs in the first two months of the season, a guy batting anywhere from first to fourth in the lineup, obviously, is a problem. And now he sat out the last two out of four ball games, which is a problem as well. So right now Ward hasn't done much. 
but he's a player you could revisit if he gets hot again. He's a hitter I would drop this week. The next hitter is Javier Baez of the Detroit Tigers to the list. This season and a half has definitely been a struggle for Baez. He got his money from Detroit, and he just hasn't produced last season 17-67 and 67 with a 238 average. And those are bad numbers for Javier Baez. Obviously, statistics and standards. And this season, we haven't seen much from him as well. Three homers, 19 RBIs, 18 runs scored, three stolen bases, a 228 average, and a 285 on base. The only silver lining for Baez, he's only struck out 30 times in 158 at bat. So his strikeouts are down a little bit this season. He's putting the ball a little bit more in play, but that's not really doing much. Besides cutting down, his batting average is still down in the 220s, 230 area. The power numbers are way down. And the last couple weeks, he's way below the Mendoza line as well. No homers, four RBIs in the time. Four runs scored, a stolen base, a 152 average, and a 188 on base. So I know by is at this point. He's been a name in fantasy baseball for many seasons, but surprisingly still owned in 54% of fantasy leagues. But I think fantasy owners should just get away from Baez. I know shortstop is a weak position. I know he's got a great track record, especially second half in most of his career as Baez. But right now it's not working out. And he don't have a lot of protection as well in this Tiger lineup. May 16th versus the Pirates, 1 for 4, a run and a rib. May 17th versus the Pirates, 0 for 3. May 19th at Washington, 0 for 5 with a run. May 20th at the Nats, 0 for 4. May 21st at the Nats, 0 for 4. And he just hasn't hit a home run in three, four weeks now is Baez. So if he's not producing power and to go with the low batting average, that's not going to help fantasy owners at all. And right now he's a hitter to get away from. And he's a drop this week in the fifth and final hitter. I look to drop this week. So I'm in Rosario of the Cleveland Guardians. So I'm in Rosario. He got year last year for owners in the Guardians. 11 home runs, 71 RBIs, 18 stolen bases, 86 runs scored, a 283 average and a 312 on base. But so far this season, besides the stolen bases, we really haven't seen much from him. A homer, only 10 RBIs, 21 runs scored, 7 stolen bases, a 247 average, and a 282 on bases. So far this season, this Guardian team, their offensive numbers are way down. The power numbers, one of the worst in the league here. Now, Ed Rosario really hasn't done anything but besides being a singles hitter this season. So the last few games here for Rosario, May 14th versus the Angels 0 for 4. May 16th at the White Sox 1 for 4. May 17th at the White Sox 0 for 5. May 18th at the White Sox 0 for 4. May 19th at the Mets 2 for 5 with a run and a rib. And a du double header versus the Mets May 21st. And that one, 1 for 7 with a run and a rib. So right now, Rosario, he's not producing for this Guardian team. He's not showing power at all. Even though I'm not expecting him to hit 15, 20 home runs. But one home run and 10 RBIs this season just isn't going to cut it for fantasy owners. And right now, he's still only 62% of fantasy leagues, but owners have had enough of Rosario, and he's been getting dropped over the last couple weeks. So right now, well, he's not doing anything of note as Rosario. He's droppable, but throughout his career, he's known as a streaky hitter where he could pick things back up and could get back on the pace he was on last season. But right now, he's not helping owners, and he's a drop this week, so that's a few hitters I look to drop here in week eight of the fantasy baseball season.